In today's tutorial, we will learn four ways to use the morph transition with pictures in your PowerPoint presentation and make them really come to life. Let's start with the first one, which is a dynamic crop effect. As you can see, we have three images on the slide. And as soon as we click, we put the emphasis on one of the images with some extra text. Click again and you'll get the emphasis on the second part. Click once more and you'll get it on the third part. So this effect is quite a nice and easy to do transition in PowerPoint. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look for the pictures. And for that, we're going to use Unsplash, where you can type in any type of image that you're looking for. Let's go for snow mountains. You can filter on the orientation. In our case, we want a landscape image and then look for a nice image that will fit your style. Let's choose this one, download and go for a large one. And this is a nice place where you can look for different images that you can use throughout your presentation. Let's take another one, large, and then one in between, maybe with beach. And then you can scroll. And whenever you find an image that you'd like and that you want to use, click it and download. Then let's go back to PowerPoint. And here we drop the images that we have just downloaded. What we want to do is we want to arrange them in the shapes. So we're going to select one of the images, right click crop, and then we're going to set the crop marks so they cover a good part of the image. Let's do that. Increase the size or drag it so that everything fits nicely and do the same for the other ones. So this one we're also going to crop and then you can select the crop marks so they meet with the previous one. Increase it in size position it so it fills nicely, gives a good overview. There we go. And then the last one, crop marks, so the bottom, and then position the image at the right spot. This will look quite good. Now we can spread them out over the slide. Let's do the nature on the left side, the water in the middle, and then the snow area on the right side. Here I just want to modify the crop marks a bit more give it a little bit of extra spacing so that we fill the slide entirely. There we go. And then the middle one, just a bit more. There we go. And these nice arrows indicate that this spacing is aligned. So that's what we want to create. Let's right click format background and we're going to give it a slightly off white background. That's less harsh on the eyes for the viewer. The next step is we're going to duplicate the slide and now we're going to re-crop. So select the right one, the snow, right click crop, and then adjust the crop marks so that it moves to the side. Do the same for the middle one, crop, position it there, and then make it the same size, move the image to the side. And then the final one, crop. This one, we want to increase the size and position it correctly so that we have the nice effect on the image. Duplicate the slide once more. Now we're going to crop the left side of the image and expand the ocean one. Position it correctly. Duplicate the final time and then crop this one to the left. Maybe adjust the picture so the ocean remains visible. And now we crop the snow one on the right and position it so everything looks good. The initial slide we want to copy or duplicate and drag it to the bottom. And now we want to add some text effect to the slide. And for that, let's use a shape, choose the rounded rectangle, and we're going to drag this on top of the image. Remove the outlines, make it off white, and let's paste some dummy text in there. Reduce the font size, and maybe let's also give a title, call this one mountains, select the title, increase the size, center it in the middle and give it a bold sub font. Right click format shape on the text box and add some slight transparency, maybe 15% transparency to it. Then we position it in the middle of the slide. You can choose if you want more or less rounded corners. And then we're going to copy this text box, paste it on the second slide. And here we want to change the name so ocean and let's call this snow now we select all of the slides 
from the first to the last. We go to transitions and apply morph. Select the first one and let's preview what we have. And now if we start with the opening slide, we have three nice images. And as soon as we click, it moves to the first one, gives a detailed explanation. Click once more, ocean gets explained. And then the third time and the mountains come across. And then if you click a final time, it goes back to the original positioning. You can see that from this snow to the closing slide, the left part, the mountain moved quite drastically. We can adjust that by fixing the position here on the previous images. So let's crop and then drag the image. So part of the mountain is still visible. And then we just copy this page or this view here. That way it's the same. And let's preview once more. And now if we click, the mountain appears ocean appears, the snow appears, and then it's a less harsh transition towards the other images. And that brings us to the second transition of today, which is going to be the zoom in effect. And it works quite well with high resolution images on your slides. The effect you want to create is we start from a high resolution image. And as soon as you click, you zoom in on a part of that image with some additional text showing up. Click once more and you zoom within that same image to a different part. And every time you click, you focus on a different area of your high res image. Click once more, and then you go back to the overall view, the nice image on your slide. And the large high quality images are crucial here. And also for that one, we're starting from Unsplash. So going again, and let's maybe go for interior. Look for an interior design that we like. You can scroll down the page. And as soon as you find an image that you like, I kind of like this one from Joshua Tree. You can download it. And I would suggest to take the original size or the largest available size for that image because we're going to zoom in quite a lot. Jumping back to PowerPoint to a blank slide and we're going to add the image here. First thing you want to do is you want to fill the entire slide with the image zoomed out as much as possible. Next, we're going to duplicate the slide. And on this image, we're going to right click crop and we're going to zoom in. So by adjusting the picture in the background, or in the crop selection, we're going to zoom in on a part of the image. If you want to zoom out, you can hold the control key and scroll in or out to zoom out further if you need so. Once you're happy with the focus area, you duplicate again, crop, and we're going to adjust the position of the picture. So in the second one, we want to focus on the bed, have the bed in the middle. We're going to duplicate once more, crop, we want to focus on the bathroom because it's quite an extraordinary bathroom in this picture, like this. And you can zoom in and leave even a little bit more if you want. And then duplicate a final time, crop and adjust the position so that the entire room is visible again. There we go. Now you want to select the images, transitions, apply the morph transition. And then as a little extra, let's also copy this text box that we have made and add some nice touches to it if you want to add some text. Of course, this isn't a must, it's just optional. Let's call this one living room, position it here, copy it, put it on the next slide, maybe on the different side, call this one bedroom, and let's modify the text a bit so that the images look different, or the, the text looks different. Once more, maybe at the bottom, bathroom, and then a final one, maybe a contact contact us where you can share some details and position it at the bottom there we go now we've applied the morph transition let's see what we've created starting from the large image and as soon as you click you will zoom in on a part of the image a text will pop up click once more you'll zoom in on another part of the image with a new text and then every time you click you zoom in on a different part that you want to highlight until eventually you click and you get the overall image again. So this is a quite little neat trick that you can use in PowerPoint to show off really high quality images and give that extra touch to your presentation. And that brings us to the third effect, which is going to be the carousel effect in PowerPoint to show your pictures. And this is quite a nice effect to show multiple pictures in a nice linear way in PowerPoint. As soon as you click, it moves to the next picture and you also have this little progress bar at the bottom to track however many pictures you have left. 
And this works for any other images that you want, so you can really customize it however you like. Let's start from a blank slide. We go to Insert, Icons, and then we want to choose the Images tab. Here we can type in Nature, and then select a bunch of pictures that you want to use. You can do this with any type of picture, that doesn't matter. Let's take five in this example, four and then once more. This one could look nice. Insert pictures, and then you have five nice images on your slide. What we want to do is we want to change the background first. So format background, and we're going for a darker background. So let's choose a dark fill. Close this one for now. Select the images, right click, go to format picture, and we're going to crop, crop the shape and make them a rounded rectangles. If you select them all at once, you can't change the corner of the radius of the rounded rectangles. So if you deselect, select them again, you can adjust the roundness. So we want it just a little bit, not too much. So you can easily adjust them. It doesn't have to be perfect. They just have to look roughly about the same corner. There we go. And now we want to align them, select them all, arrange, align, align to center. That way they're all positioned in the center. Align and align to middle. And this way they are stacked nicely on top of each other. Position them in the middle of your slide. Hold control, scroll backwards to zoom out. You can also use this zoom in or out toggle button at the bottom, whatever would you prefer. And now we're going to drag them to the side. So let's position two to the right. If you hold the shift key while dragging, they will move in a straight line. So that's always good to know. And then once more to select them all, arrange, align, distribute horizontally. This way they are evenly spaced. Scroll out more, select all of the images and move them to the right of your slide. So that's the first one is the centerpiece and in the middle. Maybe let's add a little bit more of distance so we can increase the size of the first one. If you want to increase it from the center, hold control and shift, and that way you scale the image up or down from its center anchor point. And that's what we want. So these we're going to increase just a little bit. Now we want to duplicate the slide, make this image smaller again, so it's the same size. Select everything, move it so that the second image is now in the middle. Give some extra space in here and then increase the size of the middle image. And then you repeat this step, duplicate again. And on the new slide, position the third one in the center, reduce the size. You can work with grids if you want. It doesn't have to be perfect. The illusion will be there that everything kind of grows and shrinks. So do that two times more, select them all, position to the side, increase the size, and then a final one, and then increase that size. In theory, if they're no longer visible on the slide, you can also delete them. If you want to work, have a cleaner working sheet, that is perfectly possible. Now, a little extra touch. We want to add these small dots at the bottom. So hold this, hold shift while you create a circle, remove the outline, make it white, right click, format shape, increase the transparency to let's say 60. We have five images, so we're going to Copy them five times, three, four, and five. Select them all, arrange, align, distribute horizontally, group them together, place it in the middle. And now we want one extra button that we reduce the transparency all the way to zero. And we position it at the first button, copy it, paste it on the second slide, but then move that across and do the same for the other ones. So you can move that little dot to the third place, to the fourth place, and then eventually to the fifth place, which is here. Select all your slides, transitions, and apply the morph transition. And now let's preview what we have. And this way you can create a quite a nice morph transition and a carousel effect of images within PowerPoint. And also have that little button at the bottom of your slide to keep track of how far you are in the progress of your pictures. You can increase, decrease the scale of those images as much as you want. You can really play around with it. But this is how you create the carousel effect in PowerPoint. And that brings us to the fourth tip, which is highlighting or emphasizing subjects on a slide. 
using Morph, you can really put the emphasis on certain pictures of your presentation. This means if you want to present your team, let's have a look here, you can click and then shift to the second person. Once you click again, if you give them the explanation, you can move to the third person of your team and you can really rotate here, presenting your team members in a fun, dynamic way. So it doesn't have to be static. Let's start from a blank slide and we're going to add three pictures of or three portraits of people to the slide. We're going to select the images, go to picture format, crop, and then we go to crop to shape and the circle because we want to add a nice circle crop to it. Aspect ratio, oh, you have to do this one by one. Crop, aspect ratio, one to one, and then center it in the middle so the face is positioned nicely in the middle. Once more, one to one position it downwards and then for the final one there we go and also drag it downwards let's decrease this just a little bit so they're about the same size now that you have these three images we want to play around with the positioning let's maybe first format the background and make it dark and that way the images will stand out nicer on the slide first thing we want to do is we want to focus on our first subject and position the other ones to the side. We make them smaller and our main subject, we make her picture a little bit bigger. Maybe that's too small. Let's go for somewhere in the middle. Now we add a text box and let's give her a title, change the font to white, Avenue next. And we want to make this bold, increase the font size. This could be her name, position. You can really fill it in however you like. Add another text box with some dummy text could be an introduction of the person, the job description, that doesn't really matter, that's totally up to you to decide. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to right click, duplicate the slide, and now we want to focus the attention on another person of this group, which is, which means we reduce the size of our person, put it to the right of the slide, position the other one on top, and then increase the slide of our second focus person. Position the text on the left. I'm going to modify the text because obviously they're going to have different names, but this way it doesn't mess up the morph transition. So let's remove some text or add a little bit of extra. And then we do this one more time, duplicate the slide, and then we rotate it again. So reduce the size till they're all the same. Position our person on top and then increase the size of the third subject. There we go. And now let's put that same text here. What you really want to focus on is that there's a logic because morph transition makes sure that the objects that are on the first slide move to the position where they are positioned on the second slide or on the, the next slide. So if you just randomly arrange the objects, the morph transition will also randomly move things around. So what I've done is I've put some sort of a logic rotation in the pictures. So if we follow this lady here, we can see that she moves from the main focus area to the bottom right and then she rotates to the bottom left. Meaning the lady in red, she moves from the top left to the top right and then to the main focus area. And the person here, he moves to the big area and then the small one. So they don't overlap each other and they don't fly across each other so they kind of rotate in between which means if we now select the slides apply the morph transition and then preview and then once we present the first person we click everything will nicely shift and rotate in a logical manner and then click once more there we go so it's not really overlapping too much and there's a nice logic in the way that we position and rotate all of the characters on screen you can play with the sizing and positioning as you like. Thanks a lot for watching. If you want to learn more about PowerPoint transitions, please watch the video on the screen right now.